right, guys, some fan questions. Let's check these out. You guys sent in some videos. Now I want to respond. Hey, Jill, this is Jerry Jackin from Oklahoma. Um, what do you think about old Daniel Cormier? You think he's going to get to, uh, you think he'll fight John Jones again? You think maybe heavyweight? I don't know. Light, light heavyweight? All right, no, no, I don't think so. I think that uh, John Jones, Daniel Cormier, I think that's uh, definitely in the rear view. For multiple reasons. Look, I don't think you're going to get John to heavyweight if the championship's not on the line, right? John was pretty clear he didn't want to come to heavyweight in the first place. When he got off the steroids, he got a little bit smaller. Moving up a weight class, I think that that's, I think that you're asking a lot there. So I don't think that he wants to move up, and I don't think that Daniel's going to want to move down. What's Daniel going to do? He's going to lose weight, go after John Jones, just let Stipe slide? It doesn't seem that way. Seems like John Jones, John Jones is out of the picture. And, uh... I think that, that Daniel and Stipe is the only conversation that you're going to have. It is possible that Daniel does not fight again, but it's unlikely. Daniel versus Stipe, very likely. Uh, and then that, that could be Daniel's last fight. But no, I don't think there's any room left for John. Hey, Chael, how's it going? This is Costa from Malaka MMA and the Dip and the Kid YouTube channel. My question for you is what do you think is next for our current, jo our current GOAT, John Jones? Is he going to lose his title? Is he going to become a double champ at heavyweight? What do you think is next for him after this very close win he had with Diago Santos? Thank you. All right, Costa, what's next for John Jones? I believe this hasn't been said, but I think that Johnny Walker is in conversation, and I think Dominic Reyes are the leaders of the conversation for who's next for Jones. Now, with that said, they didn't get matched up with each other, and for good reason. That would eliminate one of your contenders because whoever John fights next, you then need a next after that. So you keep your two, two top guys away from one another. You let them battle it out to see who's going to be the guy, which doesn't really get proved in the octagon. It only gets said to be proved in the octagon. It gets proved in the court of public opinion, which means you guys decide. But I do believe that Reyes is going to get a, a, an opponent soon. In fact, I think Reyes might have been given Chris Weidman Seems to ring a bell. Let's let's see if I'm right on that. But Johnny Walker is going to be fighting Corey Anderson. I think that the winner of Walker and Anderson, particularly if it's Walker, will move into a fight with John Jones. I then like the winner of Weidman versus Reyes as the next fight for John Jones. I wouldn't completely argue that order, but I believe that that is that is who John's next contenders are going to consist of. Somebody in those four. I don't want to overlook Corey Anderson. Corey, Johnny, Reyes, uh, Chris Weidman. One of those four will be next, and two of those four will be the next two. Hey, Chael. Big fan. Thanks for the channel and the podcast. So my question is, leading up to your Anderson Silva rematch, you said Henzo Gracie called you regarding your trash talk. What did he say to you on the phone? I've always been curious about that. Thanks a lot, man. Keep it up. All right, so I remember we were the day before the weigh-ins, and Henzo got a hold of me. And I was going hard. It wasn't just at Anderson. I brought Brazil into it. I might have brought jiu-jitsu into it. I don't remember doing that, but I wouldn't deny doing that. At any rate, Henzo said, enough. Enough about this. The fight. You've been doing this to get the fight. The fight is here. Stop doing it. Go get your weight off. Go out and have your fight, but enough. That was it. There was really nothing more to the conversation. All I said was, okay, hung up the phone. That was it. It wasn't a back and forth uh, with Henzo and I. You know, by the way, if you haven't met Henzo, Henzo is easily the most popular fighter amongst fighters. If you went into the locker room and go, hey, who do you guys like here? Uh, who's the most popular guy, right? Take it back to high school turns. What do you think of Henzo? Everybody's hand would go up. It would be unanimous. He is the most loved fighter amongst fighters. Hi, this is Chris from the UK. My question's this. What support is out there for fighters who are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder through retiring from the game or having to retire through injury? If there's no support, why not? And if there is support, what support did they get to help them cope with this uh, new chapter in their life now the game's over? Thank you and take care, sir. All right, so the answer I would give to that, first off, I think you're a little bit ahead. There's there's no official support in place right now, but before I say it, you go, well, why not? How rude. Well, time out a second. Vince McMahon, just by example, who's been around 
I mean, second generation between his father and him. They've been around 50 years. They just started that. They've got a wellness program, and they are actually looking after some of these guys, bringing them in. Hey, you got a drug and alcohol problem. If you do, all you need to do is tell us. We'll pay for everything. We'll handle everything. Even if you're not with the company anymore, we want to look after you. And, uh, you know, you bring up post-traumatic stress. You'll also hear the term CTE. Some of these other things that are starting to get studied, starting to get looked at and valued. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if exactly what you suggested is around the corner for this sport. But for now, no, the answer is a little bit colder. No, if you need some kind of help like that, you need to go out and find it. That's what most people have. That's very in line with what most sports do. And people go and they handle that privately and on their own. Vince, just by example that comes to my mind, did get a little bit ahead of it and is now helping to organize, fund, and encourage uh, guys who need help to get into that. And MMA, no, I haven't heard of it, but uh, you're probably not that far off. Hey, Chael. It's Nick. Hope you're doing well. Um, my question is, if you were Dana White, uh, which division would you focus on the most and put the most resources into? I'm thinking of three different divisions that are uncertain. The men's flyweight, women's featherweight, and the 65-pound division. Um, out of those three, I'm just wondering if you were in Dana White's shoes, which, which division you would focus on the most and put the most attention into? All right, so you, you got to be a front runner on this, okay? This isn't, this isn't like a business where you want to build, okay, this one's lacking, let me put my effort and resources over there. No. Everybody in this sport is given the same thing, and it's only one thing. It is an opportunity. Nothing else is given to you in this sport. So you give everybody an opportunity. The cream rises to the top. Traditionally throughout sports that are combat, the heavyweight division is the greatest prize in all of sports. Traditionally, for surprising reasons, and possibly even reasons that I wouldn't be able to explain to you, even as a historian on the sport, the prime and pinnacle weight class over the long term has been light heavyweight in mixed martial arts. It's not necessarily what you think, right? So you, you go look at what's the hardest weight class, 155 or 145. I'm not sure have your arguments, but that, that's where the greatest skill are. That's where iron is on top of iron. They got 10 John Joneses in those weight class. Only reason John Jones stands out is because the division's not the same. I fight in that same division. Okay, I'm insulting myself here too. That's where the talent's at, right? 145, 155. If you look at a division that was lacking, perhaps you would uh, look at the bantam weights, rightfully so, okay? What do you do though? And it's very common in business that you go throw money at a problem. Oh, I got a problem with it? Oh, let me throw money. Nah, that's not what it is. Everybody was given the same thing. Everybody across the board was treated equally. But the only thing you're given is an opportunity. What you do, it is up to you. So where I would put my focus is on the pinnacle divisions. Hey, Chael, got a question for the hottest free agent in MMA. Your Bellator contract is completed. Anderson Silva decides he's got one more left in him. He wants the Chael, 205 pounds. What do you say? I think it's time we got that one back. Well, I love where your head's at. And I will tell you, I go to bed every single night thinking about that. And, and maybe a couple of others I would like to get back to, but it's no way to live life. It's no way to live life having regrets, right? So much of my life's about, ah, oh, I wish I would have done this. Ah, oh, I wish I would have done that. Instead of being sad that something is over, I think that you need to be grateful that it happened. And why that may sound like a little catchy phrase, there's also a lot of truth to it. So no, I don't dip my toe into that. If I got called out by somebody, it might affect my ego. It might make me mad inside. I wouldn't show it on the outside. I would not accept the challenge. I won't be goaded into it. I put my time out there and I live by a code. I said what I wanted. I did what I wanted, but I answered for it every single night with no exception for 22 years. I take peace in that, but I am done. Chael, how's it going? Big fan. It's the MMA Mark here at the MMA Mark on Twitter. Shameless plug. Uh, my question is surrounding the rumors about Ben Askren versus Damian Maya being the next fight for Ben Askren. Uh, I was wondering if we're going to throw a jiu-jitsu guy at Ben Askren, why not throw Dylan Dennis at him? You know, let's have some fun with it. Let's sell a fight. I was wondering what you think the logistics of this are and how far you think we are from the co-promotion days. Well, I love that you said co-promotion because the first thing I was going to do is to correct you to let you know that Dylan Dennis is with the boys in San Jose and Damian Maya is with the boys in Las Vegas. So it sounds like you understand that. I love where your head's at. 
That'd be a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun in boxing being able to do that. But I don't think that's on the horizon anytime soon, right? And before it even gets there, there's going to be discussions and discussions on top of discussions. That demand to even have the meeting about meeting and talking about talking and planning about planning isn't even here yet. So let's back up though. When you say let's give Damian my a jujitsu guy, Ben Askren is a jujitsu guy. Ben Askren is an extremely high level jujitsu guy. He didn't go out and do the same level of competition in that as he did in pure amateur wrestling. But uh, boy, he's a grappler to the highest of levels. And I don't know what his belt is in jujitsu. I would suspect it's a black belt. I know many black belts who say he is a black belt. I don't know if he was officially awarded that, but you know, when you talk about Damian Maia and you want to see him against a great grappler, I think you just found one in Ben Askren. Uncle Chow, when are you going to fight Tito for a second time on Golden Boy Promotions? <laughs> Make him tap a second time. Oh my goodness, could you imagine? I don't know what's wrong with Tito. I, I really don't. I'm able to see him and see him at a distance. I've known him for a number of years, but I knew him before he was a drug addict. I, I don't know the guy, right? His mind's not there. When I knew him back in college, he was a full fact. He could, you could talk to him, by example. You could have a conversation. He could form words. He could then return words to you. Those days are just simply gone. I just saw Tito, literally just saw him at the Portland airport. He yelled something to me. Uh, it wasn't hello, but I took it as a greeting. He yelled something like I think it was meant to be mean, but when I looked up, it was Tito. So I just said, hello. I said, hello, Tito. And uh, he kept walking by and to make conversation. I said, uh, what are you doing in Portland? And he looked over to me and he just, he said, uh, and he was shaking his head. Like no, like a child would say no without forming the word. And, but no word ever came out of his mouth, but it was trying. He, I mean, this happened for about four or five seconds. I just stared at him. He was going, arr, arr. I thought, my goodness, Tito, I I didn't try to stump you. I just asked what you were doing in Portland. It seemed like a very, very basic question that you wouldn't even have to really answer. It's kind of more of a greeting, like, what's up? You know, and then you always meet the smart ass that goes, the sky. Okay, that works. It just it just means hello. And I, I completely baffled him. He never formed a word. To, this was a number of days ago, four or five days ago. To this point in time, he never formed a word. He just made sounds and his head shook and he, and it was, it was very sad.